Welcome back. We've been working our way through problem 7-1-A, and we've reached parts, parts F and G, and F and G have us working with the degree of operating leverage, but this is a concept I haven't explained yet. So I'm going to spend the first couple of minutes just explaining the concept. If you feel like you know it, just skip over that, and you can see me solve the rest of this problem. But uh, I think it's really a useful thing to understand if you don't understand it well. So that's what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to scroll down. And I'm going to actually run through an example of these two competitors. We've got these two competitors. They're in the same industry and uh, they're competing for customers and they, you know, hoping to do well. We have variable co and fixed ink. And you can see they both have the same sales. They're the same size competitors. They both have a hundred million dollars in sales. Let's pretend these are all in millions. Seventy million dollars in variable expenses for variable co and $30 contribution margin, 20 in fixed expenses to bring them to net income of 100, of 10. Uh, fixed ink, exact opposite story. They have very low variable costs, very high fixed costs, and uh, same net income. So same sales, same net income, but different income statements in between. We would say that fixed ink has a much higher operating leverage, meaning fluctuations in sales are going to make them much more profitable if sales go up and much less profitable if sales go down. And this is a really powerful concept. Um, I'll explain why with real companies in a minute, but let's just contemplate this situation. So the accounting tool we have is something called the degree of operating leverage. And there's a formula for this on our uh, chart here, operating leverage, CM divided by net income. This is just a factor. It's just a number. It's not a dollar or a percentage, but let's compute it for these two companies because they're obviously, I, I had mentioned fixed ink is operating a much higher operating le leverage uh, than is variable co. So we divide CM divided by net income for variable co, their operating leverage, degree of operating leverage, I like to call it operating leverage factor, it's also called is 30 divided by 10, it's 3. For fixed co, it's 80 divided by 10, it's 8. What this means, and I'm going to write this out in a sentence, for every 1%, I'm going to say increase, but it could be decrease, increase, decrease, <laughs> in revenue, net income will increase or decrease by 1% times the operating leverage factor. So let's say, let's say uh, revenues for uh, these companies both go up by 10% next year. 10% increase in revenue. If they go up by 10%, we expect variable co's net income. So if, again, if revenues go up 10%, variable co's net income will go up by three times 10%. Net income is going to go up by 30%. If revenues go up by 10%, net income goes up 30%. For fixed co, if revenues go up by 10%, net income goes up by 80%. So we can see that's a very big difference. So we're expecting if revenues go up by 10% for variable co, net income is going to go up from 10 to 13, increase by 30%. For fixed ink, we're expecting net income to go up from 10 to 18, an increase of 80%, right? 80% of 10 is 8, and therefore an increase would be up to 18. Let's actually prove that in our numbers. So uh, variable co plus 10% income statement. We'll do one for fixed ink plus 10% income statement. So variable co sells 10% more stuff. Therefore, its sales revenue goes up 10%. Well, when we sell 10% more stuff, guess what? Our variable costs go up 10% as well. Variable costs go up to 77, CM 33, fixed expenses remain 20, and yes, indeed, a 10% increase in revenue yielded a 30% increase in profit profit went up 30%. For fixed ink, so again, our revenue goes up to 110, that's a 10% increase. Our variable expenses go up 10% to 22. 110 minus 22 is, uh, what is that? I can't do the math in my head, 88, thank you. 
88. Fixed expenses stay at 70. 88 minus 70 is 18. And indeed, fixed expenses, uh, fixed ink rather, has seen an 80% increase in profit. Now, this is where tech companies have become very valuable and why they become very important is this concept of operating leverage. So when I sign up for a Netflix account, for example, this is why they blew uh, a Blockbuster and these types of businesses out of business, is because for them, the cost of serving me, the customer, is basically zero variable cost. To add one more customer who's paying them 10 bucks a month, it doesn't cost them anything. They're serving data over the internet. They're, they're, their costs are all fixed. Their cost of licensing film is fixed. They don't pay more if they, you know, they don't pay more to NBC to, to have the office on Netflix if uh, they have more customers or fewer. They just pay them a fixed fee. Or when Netflix develops their own programs, they don't pay more based on how many people stream those shows. They have huge, massive fixed costs, but their variable costs are very, very low. And what that means is when they add customers, it goes directly to their profits and profitability. Now they have massive fixed costs, so they need a lot of customers to cover those costs. But this is proven in the age of the internet to be an incredibly powerful business model. And most big internet companies resemble fixed ink a heck of a lot more than variable code. That's it. There's companies that don't, you know, Apple that's shipping us phones. That's a product. That's a fairly high variable cost item. That's a lot more than say Microsoft that tells you office software that's you're downloading bits and bytes. The variable costs of that are quite low. So it depends on the company, but most big tech companies resemble fixed ink more than variable ink. Netflix, uh, Google, Facebook, these companies would have very low variable costs, very high operating leverage factors. And it's a model that makes a lot of sense for internet companies. Anyway, that's an interesting aside. Maybe that was a boring aside. It's interesting to me. Let's solve this problem for ourselves. Uh, so F says compute the degree of operating leverage. We want to, uh, compute that. So it's CM divided by net income, net operating income here. So our CM is 96 based on our budget. Our operating income is 36,000. So this is F. Uh, 96,000 was our CM. Our operating income or our net income uh, was 36,000. We've assumed no taxes, right? So it's the same as net income. There were no taxes. Uh, 96 divided by 36, 2.66667, 2 again, not a percent, not a dollar amount, just a number. That's our operating leverage factor. You can see this is lower operating leverage than our either fixed co or variable co in our you know pretend companies example. Um, okay, so the final step then is G. G says, if sales go up by 20%, how much would we expect net income to increase? Use the degree of operating leverage to compute your answer. So 2.667 times 20%. So again, we expect to go up by 20 times. For every percent increase in sales, we expect uh, profit to go up by the operating leverage factor times that percent change. 2.667 times 20% is, well, this is times 20, 53.33%. Okay, so if profits were $36,000 last year, we would expect it to go up to fit by 53.33%. So uh, $36,000 times point well, let's times it by 1.53333 to say it's going up by that amount. So it's going up to $55,200. That's what we would expect it to go up to, rather. It's going to increase by the difference there. What would that be? $19,200. So it's going to be an increase of $19,200. It's going to go up to $55,200, an increase of 53.33%. This question wasn't very well framed. It could have said, you know, if sales increased by 20%, how much, you know, by what percentage 
would net income increase? That would be sort of a clearer version of the question, in which case we would answer 53%. But by how much? I think the correct answer is $19,200. It's going up by 50, uh, 53%, but 53% of what it was is 36,000 times 53%, it's $19,200. Let's prove this. So again, if sales revenue, so let's do a new plus 20% income statement here. You don't, this was not asked for. This is just sort of proving to you that it works. So 240 goes up by 20%. So times 1.2 to increase it by 20% leaves us at 288. Uh, our variable expenses will also then go up by 20%. So 144, oh, oh, oh. Increasing by 20%, 172,800. Shouldn't put that in brackets, but we know 288 minus 172,800. Is 115,200. If our uh, Fixed expenses remain at 60. Look at that, it works. 115 minus 60 equals 55 too. So all of our numbers were correct. I think the correct answer to this question is it's gonna increase by 19,200. So again, it said, how much would net income increase? It would increase by $19,200. I think a better question would have been by what percentage does net income increase, in which case we would have said 53.33%. And if you've survived this video, if you've survived this long rambling explanation, I hope it was a good explanation and I hope it was helpful to you. Have a great day and I'll speak with you soon. Bye for now.